Okay, perfect. Okay, so can you start off by introducing yourself? Yes, my name is Gabe Howard, and I host the Inside Bipolar podcast from Healthline Media. And I also wrote the book, and I, I'm going to show it, but you're going to hear like a loud thunk because I just realized yeah, I a whole it. bunch of stuff on top of it. I know, that's super embarrassing. Uh, mental illness is an asshole and other observations, uh, which should give you a, a real clear idea of my vibe at this point. But uh, that's my podcast. That's my book. And I am so excited to be here. Oh my God, thank you so much. Also, if you could like send me a link to that later, we can add that to our website. So every time like people can buy your book through there as oh, well. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, you can yeah. head over to GabeHoward.com and grab it. Uh, or you can get it on Amazon. But but listen, if you buy it on GabeHoward.com, I can throw uh -huh. in like free stickers and stuff and I can oh, sign it. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Yeah, no, if okay. you buy it on Amazon, they're just like, here's a book. But yeah. if you buy it directly from me, one, I do a happy dance when the order comes in. Two, oh, I throw in free stuff. And three, I sign it. So it's just, it's way better to get the book from me. But it you is also it. like in other places. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get the book. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll get the dance though. That's, that's the part I'm excited about. <laughs> I do. I get, every time it comes in, I get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I just want to say, um, if you want to like, you're you're breaking up a little, and I and I can't hear you. Uh oh. Can Can you hear me? Okay. You 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 frozen on my end. Completely frozen. Gotta love the internet. Stupid internet. Oh, there you go. Now? You moved. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, no, I can hear you. Ask okay. that same question. Yeah, yeah, it, it just froze. Shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to see the dance. And uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm going to get the book myself. So, yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 well, it looks like I get so excited. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah. What what I was trying to say is, if you want to have a cigarette or a coffee, you can do that. I'm just. Like, now say it again. If I if, if I want to have oh a, a, a oh, cigarette or like the coffee have, or something that's completely fine. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. So before like we get into more of the detail thing, could you just start off talking about why what bipolar really is, like talking about the basics. Yeah, so so almost everybody has heard of bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it, it's one of those illnesses that that's everywhere. Like everybody mm -hmm. is aware of it, mm -hmm. except that nobody is really aware of it. And uh, and I, I I sort of explain it uh, like this: when you ask mm -hmm. people what is bipolar disorder, they're like, well, it's two poles. It's it's extreme highs and extreme lows. So mm -hmm. uh, for the purposes of mental health, it would be. Uh, you know, like godlike mania or elevated mm -hmm. mood states, depending on if it's bipolar one or two. So hypomania, mania, uh, all the way down to uh, depression, suicidal depression, and that mm -hmm. huge, those, those two poles, right? Those two extremes. So mm -hmm. to put it simply, everybody believes that bipolar disorder is godlike mania to suicidal depression. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not entirely incorrect, but it's not entirely correct either. Uh, okay. Bipolar disorder also has this middle state and and slightly elevated state and slightly depressed state and and everything in between. So look at it as the two poles and mm -hmm. everything in between. And you're just kind of ping ponging back and forth from those two things. And the reason, of course, that this is important is because people believe that people with bipolar disorder are either manic or mm -hmm. depressed. And in actuality, they can be walking around. I can be walking around just perfectly normal, perfectly right smack dab in the middle of that spectrum uh, and, and accomplish uh, incredible things and seem very level headed, very stable, et cetera. And then, of course, when I have a, a symptom of bipolar mm -hmm. disorder, people are like, well, that's weird. Why is he doing that? And mm -hmm. oftentimes, instead of thinking of it as a disease process, they're like, mm -hmm. why is he doing that? Oh, it's because he's an asshole or because he's irresponsible or because he's a liar or, and they start attributing it to things other than the illness. Uh, and this is of course very difficult for people with bipolar disorder because we live in the same society. So we believe them, mm -hmm. you know, why did I do that? 
oh, well, clearly the reason mm -hmm. I did that is because I'm all of the things that people said. Uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a difficult little illness to, to, to manage, to diagnose, mm -hmm. to treat. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's a lot of misunderstanding. Oh, God, that, honestly, it sounds very exhausting. Like, the disorder sounds very exhausting to live the, with. You, you, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so exhausting if you have to constantly keep, like, how do you keep up with that, honestly? I mean, that's, oh. So the, the, you know, you, you sort of hit a nail on the head. You, you like exasperated just hearing about it. You're like, how do you keep up with that? Honestly. And, uh -huh. and I, I'm, I'm really glad that you had that reaction because it's the right one, right? <laughs> how do you keep up with that? Honestly? Yes. We need more people to think, oh my God, that sounds horrifically difficult to manage. Because yeah. I want to be mentally stable. Like manage. that sounds like very draining. Like if I had to, like, I feel like if a normal person had like a hundred percent of energy, I feel like I would be down to like at least 60 because half my time is just consumed doing this. Oh, it's the, one of the most difficult parts of living with bipolar disorder is the, well, if you just take your medication as prescribed, you'll be fine. Or if you just do what you're supposed to do, you'll be fine. Or if you just mm -hmm. listen to your doctor, you'll be fine. Or blah, 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 blah. They, they, they always say it in such a way that it's stupid easy, right? If you just do X, everything will be okay. So if you are not okay, it's because you're not doing X and it's your fault. So when you said, oh my God, that sounds horrible. I'm like, yes, finally, <laughs> somebody gets me. Somebody understands that it's hard. Uh, so it's it's very frustrating. I, I, I want to just like disclose to you and the audience and to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. so frustrating to be blamed for your own illness. I mean, could you imagine if we did this to cancer patients? Like, you, you know, <laughs> oh, I've been, oh, I've, God. I've been throwing oh, no. up all day. And I think oh, no. I'm sick. Ugh. You know, if you would oh. just take your medicine that's prescribed, you would not have this problem. Can you believe this guy just throwing up everywhere? <laughs> like, people hearing this and they're like, my God, that's so horrible. Why would you make that comparison? Listen, if the comparison uh -huh. makes you uncomfortable, this is my reality, right? I, I have two resting points, right? Mm -hmm. I'm either symptomatic and sick or mm -hmm. I got my shit together. There, right. there is no beating bipolar. There is no bipolar survivor. There is no winning. I don't have any of that language in my disease space. All I have is problem, not problem. That's uh, it. That's all I get. Yeah, I, 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 I'd kill yeah. for, for, for more. That'd be great. Oh my god, I, I, I honestly love that comparison so much because I wish people treated mental illness the same way they would treat any physical illness. I, 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 I don't know uh -huh. who, and, 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 you know, it was doctors, right? I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know who got together in a room and decided to separate mental health from physical health and, and put them on separate sides because <laughs> last I checked, I can't separate it, right? I, I, I can't, you, you know, I, I, I am a person, I mm -hmm. have a physical body. Right. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. I have a, a brain. I have a personality. I have mm -hmm. mental health. Right. right. And, and I cannot separate mental health from physical health. I, I, I cannot know. pull them apart no matter how hard I try. Mm -hmm. Yet my treatment team is like, yeah, we just we just concentrate on your physical health, sir. That, uh, that, that's fantastic. Of course, I'm I'm still sitting here with with mental health, whether it's good or bad is, is uh -huh. up to my interpretation, your interpretation, et cetera. But mm -hmm. I can't get rid of it. Ah, and the worst part is like your mental health like affects your physical health so 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 much. This is and... very true and something that is often missed. Yeah. Clearly, if I am having a, a, a let, let's just talk about let let's remove bipolar disorder for a minute. Let's right. let, let's make it much more relatable, mm -hmm. right? So let, you're 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 just a, a regular person. Want to be very mm -hmm. clear? You do not have severe and persistent mental illness. You are mm -hmm. not suicidal, right? Mm -hmm. You you are not even in a mental health crisis. You're mm -hmm. just a regular person with mm -hmm. regular emotions, mm -hmm. right? And then one day some things happen, right? right? 
Uh, maybe your significant other breaks up with you. You find mm -hmm. out your parents are getting divorced. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody that you care about or love passes away. You know, grief mm -hmm. is a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. These are just things that happen to most people in life. Now, clearly nobody expects you to be having a great day mm -hmm. when a bunch of bad stuff happens, right? right? Whatever that bad thing that you choose, you are now feeling down. You mm -hmm. have the blues. You, mm -hmm. you don't have diagnosable depression. I want to be very clear. Mm -hmm. You are just sad. You are sad, stressed, mm -hmm. overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Things aren't going your way. Mm -hmm. So you are having a bad mental health day. You mm -hmm. are feeling down. Now, mm -hmm. on that day, you've got to make choices just like every other day. Do you mm -hmm. brush your teeth? Mm -hmm. Do you shower? Mm -hmm. What are you going to eat? What mm -hmm. are you going to drink? What decisions are you going to make today that impact your life in the future? Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of the things that starts happening is, you know, cooking healthy food takes time. It just mm -hmm. takes time. It does. It and, does. Uh, you know, crappy food is, uh, you know, cheap and easy. So you decide that just for today, while you're feeling down, mm -hmm. you're just going to have grease. Right. You're just you're just going to you're going to get that greasy pizza. You're going to get those greasy French fries, whatever. Comfort food to the max. Now, that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. right? It's not a big bit, but you eat the food and it kind of makes you feel a little worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the next meal and it wasn't a one time deal. So you eat it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So so now your physical health is starting to suffer because you're just eating garbage and, and you're drinking nothing but soda. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you like, you you know, want, and I'm, I'm not criticizing alcohol consumption, but, it, you know, now it's all you drink. You stop drinking water. You just mm -hmm. you know, you're just you're, you're having a beer or a wine. Perfectly acceptable things, except. You know, now you're kind of you're kind of going to that that well a little more often than you <clears throat> used to. Yeah. You know, so now all of a sudden it's been two weeks. You've eaten nothing but junk food. You've mm -hmm. drank nothing but alcohol. You're making decisions while in a bad mental health state, mm -hmm. while slightly intoxicated, and your body feels like garbage because you haven't exercised, moved, talked to anybody, and it's just filled with grease. And then somebody says to you something like hey, you're not doing really well at work. And then your physical health is garbage. Your mental health is garbage. And you're like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. So you get written up. Wow. And then these things compound. And before you know it, you're having a full-blown mental health crisis that was started by a mental health issue, but uh -huh. it was exacerbated and ultimately pushed forward by your physical health choices. And yet for some reason... <laughs> We don't think those two things go together. I, <laughs> blows my damn mind. Oh god. I mean honestly when I think about it it's it sounds like something very basic but I'm astonished by how many people actually don't even realize that like it's sad. Yeah <laughs> and, and and it's I, I don't mean you, you can tell I'm really, really passionate about this. I don't mean to be that asshole that keeps interrupting, but this is like my daily life. Like, I'm just, I'm so excited to have somebody that understands. Like, I just, I just I'm giving you like all the virtual oh hugs. Oh my God. I am hugging you right Thank back. You. Oh my God. <laughs> I do these interviews so much and people are like, well, but you have to understand that people are scared of people like you. And I'm like, I know. I but, don't think so, actually. So, so thank you. Oh thank God. you. I just, oh my God. I, it's, it's, it's. Thank you. Oh my god! Actually, the thing is, uh, I have a friend who has has bipolar as well. So, um, and I, I've seen the bad side. Oh, it's bad! It's it's really, really, really bad. And I'm not trying to um in any way justify bad behavior. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I know it's not coming from ill intent, and I felt like it's so um uh, easy to just point out and be like you know what hey like shaming the other person but I was like there has to be I wouldn't say a solution exactly because there's no complete way out of this but a way to navigate this in a compassionate way for both the person going through it and the people around it because shaming has never really helped anybody honestly it's never I, helped anyone one you are absolutely correct and two I, I like what you said about how we have to handle it for the person going through it and the people around them, because mm -hmm. that's often missed as well. Mm -hmm. We get in mental health, we have like these two warring factions, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's the caregiver side. Those are mm -hmm. the people who are trying to help people with mental illness. And mm -hmm. and the caregivers are, are often parents, family members, mm -hmm. uh, friends, 
Uh, and then and then we get into like the medical side, uh, you know, doctors, therapists, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then to a, a lesser extent, but but still an important one, first responders, law enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, people, you know, com community people, uh, et cetera. And then on mm -hmm. the other side, we have the people with the illness. And mm -hmm. those two sides do not do a good job of talking to one another. First, I, I mm -hmm. want to state that unequivocally, the, the, the blame lies on both sides. Right. I'm not saying it's 50-50, but I'm saying there is blame on both sides. Uh, but what's, of course, very frustrating to me is that they're not talking to each other, uh, and and they both believe that they are 100% right. If, if you ask the stereotypical, I, I know there, there, there's some gabes out there over on the caregiver side, very reasonable <laughs> people who are trying to bring people together, but... By and large, caregivers are like, well, we need to make the decisions because we know what's going on. And all of our loved ones, they, they lack insight. They don't know. We need mm -hmm. to violate HIPAA, uh, erase all of that and just 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 make all the decisions for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's a really, really dangerous precedent. Uh, but then over on the on the lived experience side, on the peer side, on the on the people living with mental illness side, we're like, they know nothing. It's my life. I make the decisions. They, mm -hmm. they get zero a as if they haven't suffered as mm -hmm. if they haven't, you know, witnessed the police come as if they haven't been on the front ends of us yelling and screaming or punching walls or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in, uh, being uh, 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 arrested or embarrassment in front of the neighbors or disappearing for days uh, as, as if our loved ones haven't suffered. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I really think that, that both sides really need to sort of get over themselves mm -hmm. and recognize that, uh, the thing that binds us mm -hmm. is uh, the mental illness. And and while we're fighting, uh, serious and persistent mental illness is just like laughing its ass off, right? It, it's done like the perfect divide and conquer, right? Mm -hmm. Mental illness does not want to be treated. It wants to run rampant. It wants to do whatever the hell it wants. And if these two sides got together and worked together, mm -hmm. it would have less of a chance of achieving that goal. Uh, so right now we're fighting. So mental illness is just like, yeah, I'm um, winning, I'm winning. All the people who right. give a shit about this are fighting. Woohoo. Yeah. Uh, so we defeat yeah. ourselves. And it's sad. It's sad. Uh, honestly, I like I still love the cancer analogy. Like for some reason, like let's say you have cancer, it's obviously gonna affect the people around you as well. Your loved ones have to come and take care of you. They have to take care of your medication. If you're not able to work, they probably have to earn for you. So how is this any different? I, you I, fight I just, cancer together. Well, right. You know, we, we get together in other areas. And, and, and even people, you know, I work with a lot of people with bipolar disorder, a lot of people with schizophrenia, a lot of people with serious and persistent <laughs> mental illness. And okay. I'm like, hey, be honest. When you're suffering, who do you call? And uh, I, I, a good portion of them is, is, is mom, dad, brother, sister, right? It, it, it's one of those nuclear family members. Okay. Uh, right. M you know, maybe grandma or grandpa uh, or a best friend that kind of, you know, completes that list. But uh -huh. I'm like, but you just spent like the last hour, like griping about them. <laughs> like <laughs> you, you just told me that like your mom's overbearing, your, your dad is constantly lecturing you, your sister's uh -huh. judgmental, your, your brother doesn't understand and says mean things to you and that your best friend doesn't get you and that grandma and grandpa are old and don't like, you know, the, you just said when you're in trouble, they're your first call, but you also said that they were terrible, horrible people. So I, I'm putting the question now back on you. Why mm -hmm. are you calling terrible, horrible people when you're in trouble? Could it be mm -hmm. that maybe they're not so bad? All right. uh, and when you get people to start thinking that way, it, it, it really is a, a very fair point. Uh, and, and I want to say just one more thing for people listening. Just I'm not surprised that we get to this point. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's mental illness. It, it's impacting the way we think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and what degree is, is, is different in every person, uh, and not only every person, but, but how long you've, you know, are, are you newly diagnosed? Where are you at in, in like therapy or, or medication mm -hmm. management, et cetera, but make no mistake, mental illness is, is, is it's messing with the way that you think. So the mm -hmm. fact that it's created this idea in your head that your help is, is also bad uh, it mm -hmm. is that that's frankly like a, a stupid, easy magic trick. Uh, that mm -hmm. mental illness has no problem pulling off, but we need mm -hmm. to be aware of it so that we can fight it. And and, and that's just what I want people to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I kind of caught on to that, but I, I was a little intrigued by what you spoke about 
um, the godlike thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about the transition and um, to this, you know, being suicidal and depressed and that sort of a thing. And maybe this is my brain just sort of comparing disorders and that's not what I mean. But that sounds a lot like Okay, I'm just curious. Do you feel when you mean God, like, do you mean do you feel a bit narcissistic? So in the moment, the, in the moment. Yeah, I mean, so I always use uh, the the reason that I use uh, God like mania mm -hmm. is is because God is all knowing, all powerful, has no consequences. A a everything revolves around. So, so first off, it's not as much as a, a religious statement as it is a definition of God. I, mm -hmm. I think that you'd be hard pressed to find anybody, regardless of their religion, uh, mm -hmm. including non-religion, that doesn't understand that if you are a god, right, mm -hmm. that means that you live in a consequence-free environment, you have mm -hmm. all the available information, and what mm -hmm. you say goes, because after all, you're perfect in every way. Right. That is our understanding of God. Mm -hmm. uh, now, so, and the reason I add like, I want to be very mm -hmm. clear, God-like, mm -hmm. Uh, is because that is what the person with bipolar disorder believes. Okay. Our brain tricks us into believing that we are the center of the universe, mm -hmm. that we are all knowing, that there right. are no consequences, that whatever we decide is amazing. Mm -hmm. And and I and and that's of course very, very difficult because if you truly believe that all of your decisions are correct, oh, why right. wouldn't yeah. you make them? I, I mean, sincerely, yeah. I just, I, and I, on one hand, mania is extraordinarily frustrating for mm -hmm. the people who are experiencing it and the people around the person who's experiencing it. But mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I, I guess I just want to be very, very clear. If you believe for 100% zero doubt mm -hmm. that if you take all of your money and, uh, you, you know, give it to the guy at the end of the street and mm -hmm. that will give you uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, immortality. Like, let's just, let's just go all in. If right. you give all of your money, your rent money, your car payment, everything, and give it to the guy at the end of the street, he will grant you eternal life. And you are 100% positive. That that's true. You'd be a fool not to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, now you're probably thinking, um, Gabe, that that sounds like a scam, right? Because you have the ability to reason. Right. You have the ability to think right. through. Right. You, right. you have the ability to understand one immortality is not real. Mm -hmm. Right. And how is some guy at the end of the street going to grant me that immortality? Right. right. You, you, you have a rational brain where mm -hmm. you can think this through during mania. You don't have a rational brain. That guy was sent by God. He, mm -hmm. for some reason needs all your money and then you are going to live forever. So I'm doing it. You the end. Mm. I'm doing it. I'm giving all my money to the guy at the end of the street. Oh God. Okay. So I have I'm I'm curious is if this is something that would worsen it or if it would help. So suppose you're having that mania right now. Okay, I'm using an example and I'm mm -hmm. I'm around you. Obviously if you believe everything you do is right, there's no point in me trying to get you to listen to me in that moment. In that moment. So would you suggest if I comply with you in that moment and once it wears off I talk to you when you are able to comprehend what I'm trying to tell you so th this is where it gets really really tough uh the, the uh -huh. first thing I want to say before I answer this question is if I knew the answer to it dump trucks of money would show up on my lawn right because this problem <laughs> would be solved I would just tell everybody hey you have a manic loved one do the following things and everything will turn out okay yay uh so it, I don't have a perfect answer, right? Okay. But I have given this a lot of thought and I, I have some things that you can try okay. that may or may not work mm -hmm. and they might work once and never again. Okay. Uh, the first thing is, is when you're dealing with somebody with mania, it behooves you to understand that you're not dealing with a rational person. So throw right. logic and, 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 and reason out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, so many people are like, well, I explained it to them. Uh-huh. Would you explain mm -hmm. something to a two-year-old? I mean, sincerely, if a two-year-old was throwing a fit that it's not fair that they're not allowed to ride the bus that's on television, right? That's nonsense. They can't ride a bus that's on television. It's on TV, right? right. And they started screaming and yelling and you saw a parent sit the two-year-old down and explain that that's on television and you can't walk through the TV. You'd be like, what's wrong with you? They're a two-year-old that just, you just kind of got to let them go. 
right? Like that's, that's where they are in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. That said, one of the, you, nobody likes to hear, nobody wants to see their kids upset and mm -hmm. nobody wants to listen to a screaming two-year-old. So mm -hmm. what we do in, in, in that, and, and what I'm going to recommend that you do with the person with mania to keep them safe is distract, right? The, the child throws the, the temper tantrum because they can't ride the bus that's on television. And you say, mm -hmm. Hey, would you like to play a game? Would you like to go do this other thing? Would you like to mm -hmm. have lunch? Would you like mm -hmm. to get dressed now? Would you like to watch a different show? You don't mm -hmm. tell them that they can't do it because that doesn't make any sense. They, they can't understand that. Uh, so if I was going to take mm -hmm. all of my money and give it to the person at the end of the street, you explaining mm -hmm. to me why that was stupid would just make you the enemy. Right. Because after all, you can't see what I see. But if you were like, Gabe, does it work for me? I'd be like, what do you mean? Well, can, can I give all of my money and live forever? Well, that's a good point. I don't know. Well, let's go ask, <laughs> right? And now you can walk to the end of the street and now you have access to that guy. Right. And then you can be like, hey, if I give you all my money, does it work? And that guy will be like, yeah, if you give me all your money, I can grant you immortality. And you're like, oh, awesome. Hey, Gabe, I'd like to talk to this guy for a minute. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And then they goes away and you can say, look, get the away from my friend. Right. Yeah. I will call the police. Right. And then, then, you, you know, you got to hope it works. Right. So now Gabe goes and gets all his money. You pretend to get all of your money and we go back there and he's gone. Well, geez, what? Where'd he go? Oh, right. Gabe, this is such a bummer. You, let's go to lunch. Let's and go. Thinking, yeah. <laughs> right, then, then later, the, the second part of your question is, okay, so you've distracted, you've avoided, you've dangled a shiny thing to move the person around. You've never disagreed with me. You never once right. said giving some dude at the end of the street, your money will not grant you. Nope. You, you have asked questions. You have, you have done things you have, you know, distracted. And then eventually I, I move out of it. Right? right. I'm no longer manic. And you can recognize this because you're my friend. You've known me for a long, long time. Uh -huh. And you say, Hey Gabe, you know, a, a, a few days ago, you were ready to give all your money to the guy on the end of the street. Mm -hmm. And then listen to my reaction. If I say, I, I, I know I, I'd be broke. I, I can't believe I believed that was true. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, yeah, I was really worried about you. And, and, uh, and I, I was, I, I'm glad you didn't go through with it, but mm -hmm. you know, next time you might. What, what, can I, can I, can we get some help? Can, can mm -hmm. you talk to a therapist on my behalf and maybe explain this? Because right now I could be trying to figure out how to get you some rent money, mm -hmm. right? I, and I can't pay your rent. I can't pay your car payment. I can't buy you food. Like that would just be such a burden on me. Can, can we do this together so that I don't have to worry about you anymore? Mm -hmm. Language like that. Mm -hmm. What can you do so that I don't have to worry about you? What favor can you do for me so that mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about you. Uh, to 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 wrap this up all in a nice little bow, you know, one of the things that I, that I an example that I always use is what's the purpose of a first date, right? And and uh, the right. people who say to get a second date, those are the reasonable people. People right. who say to decide if you want to get married. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Too far ahead in the chain. Right. When you're on a first date, all you should be trying to determine is, is there enough here? that I want to see you again. The whole right. marriage conversation, partnership conversation, merging our money, meeting our parents, it's that's far off. way down the far road. Off. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that when people are working with people with bipolar disorder, they think, mm -hmm. okay, the goal is to get them stable and to get the medical treatment. Right. That's not the goal right now. The okay. goal is to keep them safe I I until they cycle to you can reason with them and then to slowly get through all of those steps. And I think people miss that a lot. They, they, they believe television where like one strongly worded dramatic speech will mm -hmm. solve this problem. Ah, uh, when has that ever worked for anyone? Forget bipolar. When has that ever worked for anyone? Even with therapy, you need consistent therapy. A one-time advice has never worked for anyone. How is that going to work for someone with a genuine disorder, like when I right. said it. <laughs> yeah, it, it reminds me of the, I, 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 I love these memes that, and, and they're, uh -huh. they're, they're always, they're always female centric, but it says something like, you know, never in the history of ever as a man telling a woman to calm down ever worked. And then they usually have like people throwing rocks in, in, in washing <laughs> machines and then turning the washing machine on. And of course it spirals out of control or I just, but I, I think about this a lot. I mean, like you said, forget about bipolar disorder. Just 
if you walked in angry and somebody looked at you and said, calm down, you might as well just be dumping gas on the fire. Right. And we as a society <laughs> haven't mastered that. We're not good at that. I, I hear people tell people to calm down all the time. And I think, wow, uh, that was work. the, that, that was, that, that was the wrong thing. To, I, I shouldn't say it's always the wrong thing to say. I, I mean, you, you, you know, I, 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 I don't want to speak in, in black and whites, but we, 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 or I don't want to, I don't want to be accused of black and white thinking, but nine <laughs> times out of 10, the phrase calm down is a dismissive statement. That means I don't care about your feelings. And we have to acknowledge that even if we don't mean that, that is what is heard. Mm -hmm. And the onus is on us to communicate. So even if we're not trying to do anything mean to our friend with bipolar disorder, it doesn't matter. That is not what is, is comprehended or understood by the person you're talking to. So mm -hmm. the reason that they're comprehending it incorrectly is because they have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Why can't you make changes when you are in perfect mental health? And, mm -hmm. and I ask people that a lot. I understand why they're behaving the way that they are. Why are you behaving the way that you are? Right. Uh, honestly, that's what I said. Uh, uh, maybe this is just my personal experience, but I know a lot of people with disorders versus a lot of people that don't have disorders. And sometimes I feel like the ones that do have a disorder seem to be more cognitively intelligent when it comes to the communication, when they are sane compared to the people that don't even have a disorder. Like sometimes I actually feel like I'm talking to a child. And uh, I think people really need to up their game with communication. Like the way you put it through is so important. Like like you said, telling someone to calm down has never worked. <laughs> it has never worked. It just it just worsens everything. So... It worsens everything. I, I, I. When you said it seems like people with disorders have better communication, I first off, I I have no idea whether or not that's true, but I gotta uh -huh. tell you. Uh -huh. My gut tells me that it might be because a lot of people with, you know, various mental health issues, they've gotten uh -huh. treatment for it. Uh -huh. and, and one of those treatments is therapy. Uh -huh. they've, they've, they've gone to therapy. Now, there's all kinds of therapy. I want to be clear. I'm not even necessarily talking about one on one therapy with right. with a, a, a psychologist or, or a, a, a counselor. I mean, they could have also gone to a support group. Right. Mm -hmm. Where there's structure and they, they watch how other people communicate and they see mm -hmm. what works or what doesn't work or how the group responds. There's a lot of data to mm -hmm. be gleaned by that. So there probably is some notion that people with uh, mental health issues who have sought help, they've just mm -hmm. gained some experience that maybe other people haven't had. And it it really reminds me of something that my my mother says. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my mother is, is, is an awesome woman. She doesn't always come off Aww. well, but finally I have a story that I can tell where my mom comes off. Awesome. Okay. My mom said, and still says to this very day that she believes that every single person in America should have mm -hmm. to work retail for a month. She, she, she believes that they should have to work in retail for a month, customer service, fast food, uh, uh, Walmart, grocery store, whatever, because mm. she believes that a lot of the reasons that people are so angry at customer service reps and retail workers is because they simply do not understand how difficult this job is. We wow. devalue retail workers. We roll our eyes. We make jokes like he's just some burger flipper, but yet we, as the public, if we don't get what we want out of the burger flipper, we mm. lose our damn mind. So my mother is just very fascinated by this concept that mm -hmm. we think their job is stupid mm -hmm. and yet we're angry when they don't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. So she, she believes that if everybody worked retail, that would change uh, their, their outlook and the way that we communicate with retail workers. And I, I'm, I'm 90% positive she's right because you can always tell whenever there's a problem when somebody's worked retail because they, 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 they show up very politely like, hi, I ordered this uh, cheeseburger and I wanted no pickles and there are just some pickles on it. Is there any way that I can get another one without pickles? Whereas the people who haven't worked in retail, I ordered no pickles and you gave me pickles. I, I don't want this. And it's just, w why did our manners go into, how hard why? is it? How hard is it not to put pickles on this? You know, I, I could be allergic and I could die. It's like, what, what are you doing? Like, just, just ask nicely. Just tell them pickles. in a nice way. You don't have to uh, yeah. be so mean. Yeah, I'm fascinated by that. But uh, so sincerely, I, I think there, there's a lot to gain. I, I know that that was a that was a long and winding road to get to. Oh, no. I think everybody should go to therapy. I think that everybody should learn communication skills. I think that everybody can improve in these areas. Uh, and if you are one of these people listening 
and you're like, well, my communication is fine. Uh, I can already tell you it's not. Anybody who <laughs> thinks that they communicate perfectly and has nothing to learn, uh, you, nope, nope. I don't care who you are. Nobody is perfect at right. everything. And uh, uh, listen, I don't know if you're a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, I, I do I, like I, Taylor Swift. I love I Taylor do like Swift. I, I like <laughs> uh, You know, Taylor Swift has it, one of the reasons I, I'm not necessarily a fan of, of her music. I, I don't mind it, but I'm kind of outside of her age group. Right. But uh -huh. Uh, one of the things that I, that I, the reason I bring up Taylor Swift is because Taylor Swift has the first world tour, or I'm sorry, the first mm -hmm. concert tour, uh, to, to make over a billion dollars. First time in history. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. other artist has ever made a billion dollars on a concert before. Mm -hmm. So arguably, since she's made the most money off of her concert, it's reasonable to assume that she is the best at it. Uh, and yet she still has a dress rehearsal before every show. She right. performs the entire thing to an empty audience. The a, a, every lyric, every dance move, every stomp, she goes over it because she wants to make sure that when you when she gets to that night with the 80,000 people there, mm -hmm. even if she figures out one thing that she can do better, uh -huh. one mistake that she might have made, one uh-oh, we need to move this 2 feet to the left or oh, I didn't realize that the, that if we put the camera there there was it. She needs to get all of that worked out. Because Absolutely. she wants to make sure that the people who paid hundreds of dollars to see her mm -hmm. get perfection. Absolutely. So I, I, you know, look, Taylor Swift doesn't even think she's perfect. Uh, <laughs> and, and she's made a billion dollars doing the things that she does, which is, which is incredible. Uh, yeah. Nobody else has ever done that. Forget about the billion dollars. All, all I want people to hear is that she has done something that nobody in history has ever done before. Not banned, not, not singer, not, not anything. She's done it. And yet she still sees the need to practice. So I think we need to get out of our own way sometimes. Absolutely. Otherwise, I mean, if you think your uh, communication is absolutely perfect, now that's, that's a godlike thing in your head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's the first sign. If you think, I mean, no one's perfect. So if, if you're open to like learning more, I think that's like a first I respect anyone who is willing to work on themselves. That's it. Doesn't matter what disorder you have. Doesn't matter. As long as you're trying, that's what really matters. Because a lot of people don't even try. I could not agree with that more. <laughs> <laughs> and as for your mom's statement, I wouldn't even say 90. I think I, hug, I agree 100%. And this is my personal belief. Because um, I think when we like born, it's not like we born with empathy, right? Like we, you learn things over time. And I do think empathy and communication skills are something we kind of ingrain into children. So why can't we do that over time, even with adults? It might be more difficult, but I think these are things that can be taught. And like your mom said, I think this should be like a compulsory thing that people kind of go through. Just like one month of, even if it's not retail, like any sort of customer service. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Being a server, uh, just, just any sort of public facing thing. And you really get an idea, you, you know, b behind the, behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. for anybody who's listening that, that doubts me on this, just, just think about, uh, I, I, I have reached the age where all of my friends have kids, you know, my, my siblings have kids, et cetera. And I just, mm -hmm. I, I laugh at the dumbass child rearing theories I had when I was 20. Uh, I was like, oh, my kid will never do X. And, and my sister had all of these things. Now, now I escaped it by never having children. So I am not the hypocrite of the family. <laughs> uh, but a, 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 everything that my sister said her child would never do, uh, mm -hmm. her child does loudly under spotlights. Uh, <laughs> like my sister said she just didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, there, there's a lot of people who just, mm -hmm. they really don't understand all of the pressures of parenting. Mm -hmm. And it, when they only have half the information, they make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. When they have all of the information, they make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I want people to apply that over to managing mental illness, working mm -hmm. with people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. You don't have all the information because mm -hmm. it's impossible. You mm -hmm. can't know what it's like to live my life. So you are, by definition, going to be missing some information. And, and that's why I want people to keep an open mind to talk to me to listen and and again to focus on the idea that if you are working with me you need very very niche very reasonable very very small goals for me 
I, again, people try to work with somebody with bipolar disorder and like, my goal is for you to be well. Okay. Mm. This is like being on a first date and saying, my goal is for us to get married. Married. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I understand that the first date leads to the second date and, and maybe you are a person who wants to be married. But mm -hmm. uh, again, if you are sitting there on that first date, evaluating them for marriage, you mm -hmm. just, you, you're not doing a good job. And, and, you know, frankly, it's kind of creepy, um, but <laughs> yeah, moving, <laughs> moving that aside, you're not going to get the data that you need. Right. I, I don't think you're going to do a good job of evaluating them for marriage because mm -hmm. you really don't know them very well. Right. Uh, and again, it, it really is the same way. If you are working me, with me for the first time, uh, going back to our example, your goal should be helping me not give all my money to the guy at the end of the street. Mm -hmm. uh, it should not be Gabe has wellness and would never make that mistake again. That that's that's a that's a that's a future goal, not right. a a current goal. I, I love that. I, I love that example so much. I think we as a society, we just want a quick fix to everything, you know, like just put a bandit and that's it. Boom. You, you're fine. And this right. just doesn't work like that. Like you have to take things slow. Things take time. Healing takes Wouldn't time. Wouldn't it be great if it did work that way? Right. I, I, mean, I, just, I, <laughs> I do want to take a moment to acknowledge. I, I understand why people want that to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm not a fool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just, it, it's, I, I don't think people are being like mean uh, mm -hmm. for what it's worth. I just, I think that once again, it, it's that lack of understanding. Right. And I, I think it's super important to understand it. And, and I, I do think we're getting there. I, I, mm -hmm. I do. I do. Slowly. Slowly. Very, very slow. Getting there. <laughs> I'm excited for that. So uh, I, okay. So um, I do have very like intricate questions, but um, I'm sorry, I just want to clear this out even for the audience, maybe. Could you talk about the difference between bipolar one and two? Yes. So bipolar, so here's they both have the, the same general floor. So right. that, that that's remember it's bipolar, so it's two extreme moods. They have uh -huh. the same general floor, uh -huh. uh, right? D depression, right? That that's uh -huh. that's the, the floor. But when you go up, bipolar two stops at hypomania. Uh -huh. Right. Whereas bipolar one goes all the way to full blown mania. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I want to say a, a couple of things. Now, first off, sometimes people say that bipolar 2 is a less severe form of no, bipolar. bipolar. One, yeah. That's not true. Uh, oh. uh, it, it's just it's just different, right? It, it's not really fair to say that it's less severe. It, mm -hmm. it's, sort, it's a bit like saying that, um, uh, l let's say that you and I are both dying, uh, or not dying. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, let's say that you and I are both in the hospital with respiratory failure okay. and uh, 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 one person has, uh, and we, so we both have lung issues. Our, our okay. lungs are not working. Right? right. So one could agree that both of us are in the same, uh, are in the same situation, right? right. Both of us are, our lungs are not working. Mm. Um, but one of us has lung cancer and one of us has pneumonia. So somebody says to the person with pneumonia, whose lungs aren't working and who is in critical condition, well, you have a, you have a less severe case here. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, does, does it feel less severe? You're, you're, you're both being treated for the same thing. You're both laying there. Now, people are going to argue, well, lung cancer does sound worse than pneumonia, maybe. But what if the person with lung cancer lives and the person with pneumonia dies? And somebody says, well, but cancer is worse. Well, right. But the person with cancer is alive. And the person with pneumonia is it so that's where it becomes sort of I, I like to call it the suffering Olympics. Um, and, and I don't like this idea that if somebody says I have bipolar two, somebody mm -hmm. immediately says, Oh, well, at least it's not as bad as bipolar one. One, oh. why does that matter? Um, so there, there, I can see where the general public here is well, it stops at hypomania. So that, uh -huh. that that's that's easier to manage, potentially easier to manage than full blown mania. I understand from a medical perspective why we sort of have to separate these things out so we can get ahead in treatment. We can understand what we're looking at. But for mm -hmm. the purpose of the general public, whether you have bipolar one or two, you have it bipolar disorder. It's difficult to manage, uh, and the challenges are unique uh, among each uh, for each particular disorder. Um, but to go all the way back to the beginning, bipolar mm -hmm. one is depression to full-blown mania. Bipolar two is depression to hypomania. Um, hypomania. So, okay. Yeah. 
great thank you for that i mean the thing is i feel like um uh, when it comes to public eye people do them because the severity of it sounds from the external eye it sounds lesser they just like oh yeah, yeah this one's lesser but it's it's about the person who's going through it it's not about you it's about right. it's about the person with the disorder that that's what people forget all the time it's not about you it's about them and and that's where i again i i understand we're we're doing a lot of uh uh, uh layman's terms right mm-hmm. like just the the it i i also think that we're doing a thing where people just want to feel better mm-hmm. uh if, if that makes sense they're right. just like well but since bipolar two sounds less scary. So I want to believe that I'm in a better position and that's a comforting thought, uh-huh. but it could also be a dangerous thought. Right. Uh, and it, you know, the, the, the example that I always use is, is cigarettes and vaping. Um, okay. so vaping is less damaging and less dangerous than mm-hmm. cigarettes, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. It doesn't mean that there's not health concerns. It, it's not zero. It's just less than something else. Right. So I, I just, could you imagine if somebody, uh, uh, I, I love extreme analogies. I'm, I'm kind of known for it, but okay, let, let's it. say that you're in a room with a, a, a serial killer Okay. and uh, you're like, oh my God, don't put me in the room with a serial killer. And they say, no, uh-huh. don't, don't worry about it. He uh-huh. only killed five people and we've put your buddy in a room with a serial killer who killed 15. Would that provide you any comfort whatsoever? Uh-huh. Would you be like, oh, well, never mind. I'm no never longer mind. scared. <laughs> I have like one third of the chance to survive. Yes. Just, hey. I, I don't think people would think that at all. No, people would be like, not. I said, get me out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I only point that out because... It, it is important to understand the differences. It is important to understand your own diagnosis, how bipolar disorder reacts to you, what coping mm-hmm. skills you need to learn, how treatment is impacting you, what mm-hmm. areas that you need to improve. It, it, and and so it is important to understand the differences between bipolar one and bipolar two, but it, it sort of irritates me whenever I hear anyone mm-hmm. uh, say to people with bipolar two, well, it's less severe because oh, it certainly doesn't feel that way to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I have bipolar one and, and the, and I, I only point this out because I used to be that person. I used to say oh, bipolar okay. two is a less severe bipolar. bipolar and then one. somebody with bipolar two came up to me and said, you know, just out of curiosity, what, they were very polite. They're like, why do you think that? And I was like, well, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, what about this? What about mm-hmm. this? Mm-hmm. What about this? Mm-hmm. And it really got me thinking. And I was like, you're right. Oh, I, I am yeah. diminishing an experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I like to make sure that that uh, shines through whenever I'm interviewed. Right. Mm-hmm. I tell everyone who hears that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I, I'm just. I'm not trying to like compare a disorder, but because it sounds very similar. In case you know, I would love if you could share your knowledge. So, uh, based on the things you've said, bipolar sounds a bit like borderline personality disorder as well. So, uh, borderline personality disorder and bipolar are are miles apart, uh-huh. uh, not even remotely the same thing. Uh, so, mm-hmm. borderline personality disorder is one a personality disorder. So right. it, it's something that impacts your personality. So, right. for example, it doesn't respond to medication um, because it's mm-hmm. it's your personality. Um, bipolar disorder uh, is is not a personality disorder and mm-hmm. does respond to medication. Right. Um, the symptoms of borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder are very, very different. Remember, bipolar disorder, its hallmarks are extreme moods. One minute you think you're a god, the next minute you think you're garbage, the next minute you have grandiose thoughts, the next minute you think that your mom will be happy if you're dead, uh, and on and on and on, right? You're just, you're cycling. Um, mm-hmm. I, I shouldn't say the next minute because it, it, it could also take days, weeks, months. Uh, right. But you're having distinct episodes where you're your uh, um, moods change rapidly. Uh-huh. Uh, borderline people are generally consistent. Uh, people with borderline personality disorder, their, their, their moods are generally stable. Um, where they have issues is they tend to seek out uh, uh, dramatic relationships. Um, they, they tend to uh, thrive on chaotic situations. They, they uh-huh. tend to steer into things that are 
uh, maybe not healthy for them um, mm -hmm. because it keeps things interesting. Uh, and there's there's all kinds of research onto why this may be. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I want to make sure that 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 anybody hearing this, uh, borderline personality disorder is uh, it's such a stigmatized illness um, because is. unfortunately the the way that it sort of presents is, uh, for example, uh, you're a man, mm -hmm. let's say, and you have borderline personality disorder, Go and ahead. you just keep getting in these relationships over and over and over again with unavailable people, with mm -hmm. people who treat you poorly. Uh, mm -hmm. with people who steal from you. And then you get in these huge fights in front of everybody. And mm -hmm. every single time you bring somebody home and you say, hi, I'm dating fill in the blank. Everybody mm -hmm. rolls their eyes because they know that later that day, the two of you are going to be screaming at each other on the porch. And that's a real symptom of borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's, it's not completely in their control, uh -huh. this idea that they're seeking out these mm -hmm. relationships, but everybody believes that it is. So eventually Absolutely. what starts to happen is when you say, hey, can I bring my 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 new significant other to dinner? They're like, no, no, you can't, which starts to isolate people. And mm -hmm. th then they they blame they get blamed for their person, you know, for for borderline personality disorder. I'm not saying that people with bipolar disorder don't get blamed for bipolar disorder, that but it, it just, it seems to be so prolific, the, the, the stigma um, Absolutely. that even when they try to get help, uh, even when people with borderline personality disorder sit down and try to get help, people say things like, well, stop dating unavailable people. Well, stop doing that. Why do you got to fight? In front of your mom? It's like, that, that's not helpful. You're, you're giving me conclusions, no. not a path forward. Um, but uh, borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder can coexist. So there mm -hmm. are people with bipolar disorder who also have borderline personality disorder. Oh, right. Uh, borderline yeah. personality disorder. There's a lot of selfishness. Uh, it, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that that I, I, I explain that the selfishness is in many ways unintentional. Uh, it, it, it's not necessarily aware of it, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but from from an outside perspective. It mm -hmm. very much uh, presents like the person is constantly making the best decision for them and only seeing things from their perspective. Um, and that may well be true. Uh, the thing that's, that is unfortunately missed is why they why, are doing yeah. this. It's often attributed that they're doing this because of malicious intent, where right. in actuality, they're doing this because they don't understand any other way. E mm -hmm. Either their, their, their brain, uh, um, has not yet reached a, a point where they can understand it. They haven't learned it. They haven't gone. It's, it's an extraordinarily complex illness, borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the stigma and discrimination, a lot of people aren't looking into it. And uh, the, the last thing that I'll say on is, you know, even as I'm sitting here explaining it, I, I already know that it's going to irk people. Well, you said that people with borderline personality disorder are selfish. Uh, and I want to be very clear. I, I didn't say that. I, I said, tend to make selfish decisions. Uh, yeah, and they're right. like, well, that's not fair. You're judging them. I, I, I'm not judging anyone. Um, but when I was manic, I made selfish decisions. Yeah, it doesn't make me selfish. It just means that I was making selfish decisions. selfish decisions. And it's very difficult because, uh, last thing I'll say, unfortunately, one of the characteristics of borderline personality disorder is sort of a, a feeling like you're being persecuted or feeling like you're constantly being judged. Attacked. Yeah, 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 being attacked. So even somebody listing the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, you're like, oh, well, you're judging me. Um, I, I, and un unfortunately, that makes it very difficult to work with people with borderline because, as you know, in order to work with somebody, you've got to point out the things that need addressed. Need to be addressed, yeah. And when you point those things out, it very much feels like an attack. So um, I know many people with borderline personality disorder, and they struggle so very deeply they, mm -hmm. they just, they cannot help it. Uh, somebody tells them something and they, they get super defensive and mm -hmm. they don't want to be, and they struggle with it so much. And I, I, and unfortunately people just judge them. Um, and it's really bad if you're a woman, because then you just get tagged with all kinds of things. All kinds um, of things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, yeah, I, I, there's so much that can be said on borderline personality disorder, but I, I really want to make sure that people hear that it's just, it is so incredibly discriminated There's, against and stigmatized oh that it makes people not want to talk about it for fear of uh, 
of upsetting people, angering people or misleading people. Yeah. And uh, there was a time that I wouldn't even talk about it, but then I realized that by not talking about it, I'm making it worse. Uh, of course, by talking about it, I make my email box worse. So I can't <laughs> win, uh, but that's okay. I, 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 I still think it's okay. No, I think you should totally talk about it. Ashley, um, I, I, I usually don't say this, so I'm going to, I'm going to say this. So um, I, uh, uh, with my NGO, with the reframing, you basically, I, I do focus on destigmatizing all sorts of disorders. So I, I do destigmatize BPD, bipolar, and BD, everything. So I, along with the support, get a lot of backlash on my emails, getting so many. And I, I could tell some of them are pretty like, um, just to like defame speakers, but they'll be like, why oh, why are you promoting this? Why, why are you promoting right. this? Other? And I'm like, that's not what I'm doing here. We're not, we're not promoting mental illness. We're trying to understand mental illness. That's, that's a huge difference. And right, you can't just attack everyone. Like there is, it becomes like this, and I hate when they turn this into some abuse versus victim mentality thing that yeah. goes on. I'm like, that's, that's, oh God, the amount of hate, yeah, you're right. It's, it's so stigmatized. Everything is just so stigmatized. It's, it's horrific. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's, these are difficult waters to wade into. I, I, I mean, there, there's. You know, I, I'm 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 struggling to. It, it they're, 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 If you don't talk about it, mm -hmm. people believe things that, that aren't true. Right. If you do talk about it, you could say things that, that while maybe true for many people with mm -hmm. bipolar disorder mm -hmm. or half the people with bipolar disorder, they're not true for. Everyone, everyone with bipolar disorder. So the, one of the things that'll happen is, you know, I'll explain, you know, like, well, with bipolar disorder, grandiose thoughts are very common. So you mm -hmm. think you have the greatest business idea in the world, but you, you don't, that's just grandiosity. And whenever I state that, you know, in, in any large enough public forum, I will get an email from a whole list of people who have started businesses. And they're like, you know, hello, Gabe, my name is Jim. I live with bipolar disorder. Hello, Gabe. My name is Jane. I live with bipolar disorder. And yeah. they both started businesses and they are successful businesses. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so you saying that people with bipolar disorder only come up with business ideas because it's grandiosity is offensive. The, the problem is, is for everyone. And, and listen, I, I'm, I live with bipolar disorder. This is my full-time job. I own this business. I, you, you know, can't do anything very well author. I, I am a self-employed person with bipolar disorder, but for every one of me, there's, there's thousands of, of people with bipolar disorder who woke up one morning and they're like, you know what? I've got it. I'm going to start Bopalopoly. What, what is Bopalopoly? Oh my God. It's Monopoly, except with a twist. And, and they, <laughs> they invest all of their money in Bopalopoly. And uh, then they get sued by Parker brothers because it was just Monopoly. Uh, they just, they just rearranged, they, they made the board a triangle and you, you think, why would anybody believe that's a good idea? Because that's what grandiose thinking does. So I, I do like to warn people about this because it, you, you don't want to, you, you don't want to spend all of your seed money on Bopalopoly, uh, because then when you get stable and when you get well, and you have a really good idea, when uh -huh. you come up with cards against humanity, you right. don't want to be like, well, that would have been a really good idea. You know, now that I'm stable, now that I've researched it, now that right. I've written a business plan, now that I've, but everybody knows that I'm the guy that invented Bopalopoly. So they're not investing in this because I've got this really high end failure on my right. record uh, and I spent all my money. Uh, so I, I just, I like to remind people of that, but listen, as, as sure as I'm sitting here, the minute I say grandiosity leads, leads people with bipolar disorder to start businesses that are just destined to fail from day one, uh -huh. I will get emails from successful people with bipolar disorder who have started businesses. Uh, so that's what makes it very difficult to speak about because it's not one size fits all. It, it's right. just simply not. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know why, like it's, it's different for everyone. You can't, you can't really compare um, 
I mean, everyone's life is pretty different. But I just have to ask, did he just come up with that name? Because that's really funny. Bopalopoli? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just just made it up <laughs> right on the spot. I, I I have no idea what put Monopoly in my head. And then I just changed the name ever so slightly. Uh, it, it's, okay. The 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 analogy though, I I, I want to be like super honest that when when I was grandia, you know, I I went through my own grandiose thinking, and and I literally started companies that were already started. Uh, other people had them; they weren't original ideas at all. Oh, I, I just oh. I I would see a company, I'm like, oh, I want to open up a computer store. Okay, I own a computer store now, and then I would I would lease space and I would fill it with, but. I had no branding. I had no marketing. There was nothing about my store that was any better or different or unique. There's no reason that somebody should buy a computer off of me when they've got all these other computer stores to choose from. And then the right. business would fail. And I'd be like, well, I don't understand. I understand now, you know, 25 right. year old, Gabe, you know, 22 year old Gabe didn't understand, but 47 year old Gabe looks back at the, I'm like, here's why it failed. No, no consistent marketing, no plan, no branding. There was no reason that anybody should buy from me when they should mm -hmm. go to all of these other places that had, uh, you, you know, a much better system in place. They had a, a much better offer. They were frankly, just more professional and instill mm -hmm. confidence in the customer. Mm -hmm. You came to me and you walked in and you saw a guy who was nice and, and you saw a couple of computers and I, I would in fact deliver on what I sold. I wasn't ripping people off, but I didn't instill a lot of confidence in people. I mean, look right. at retail stores, you, you, you know, they're, they're, they're laid out and, and they're, they're branded and they're pretty. And, you know, your high end retail stores are branded high end, your, your, your lower end, uh, uh, you, you know, save money. They're branded that way. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had no personality whatsoever to my store. It was just like, come in, give me money and I'll give you a computer. That's, right. that's not exactly the kind of thing that's going to lead you to success. But right. I believed it was because I stole somebody else's idea. Huh. And you thought it was yours. And you genuinely and thought, thought it was work. mine. You genuinely thought it was unique in the moment and you thought it would work. But yeah. I did. I did. Uh -huh. I, I genuinely thought. And, and that's the dangerous part, right? You start to believe these ideas are yours and right. they're not. You, you, mm -hmm. you just changed a couple of letters in something else, uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, in, in my Bilopolopoly example, I, I just made the Monopoly board a triangle instead of a square. Uh, and, and I changed some words. And instead of calling it Park Place, I, I, I called it Jane's Place. And mm -hmm. uh, here I thought I had an original idea. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't. I, I just I just made some changes to an existing IP, which could get mm -hmm. me in legal trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. I invested a lot of money because these people are willing to take your money. You know, I, I ordered 10,000 Bopalopoly boards that were in triangles. <laughs> and it's like, why are you doing this? I don't know. And, and it's just, it, it, it's a shame because it, there there was this genuine desire, uh, or, right. or sorry, there there is this genuine desire to be self-employed, to, to right. launch a shingle, but you've mm -hmm. got to put it through due diligence and you've got to really understand not only the areas where you can potentially be successful, but mm -hmm. the areas where you can potentially fail. And good businesses understand their weaknesses extraordinarily well. Right. Open to criticism, open to learning more, right? Yes. Uh, also, thank you for sharing that. But things have worked out for you, so I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, 50th time's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop trying. Uh, so, um... I'm just sort of curious. So um, I, I now remember why I was trying to make that analogy of uh, BPD and BPD. So um, let's say like, you know, someone with like borderline or like bipolar, you know, they sort of like for a borderline person, they split and they sort of like got really mad at someone that they shouldn't have. Let's say you had like a, a mania episode. So how do you as someone with bipolar, if you do, later on deal with the feeling of shame or regret and guilt so there's once again it's one of those not every, you know there, there's no one size fits all right. uh, and, and of course i'm going to give all the generic answers this is the kind of thing that you work out in therapy this is the kind of thing that you work out in a support group this is the thing that, that you need to be open and honest with yourself mm -hmm. uh, and, and with others about so that you can really get 
a, a, a full understanding of what happened. But here's here's sort of the 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 the, the pro tip from Gabe. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel that you should run run head first into these things. You should apologize. Okay. And okay. people are often like, well, but it's not my fault. I, I hear this a lot. Gabe, it's mm -hmm. not my fault. I was sick. I'm like, okay, stop right there. It was not mm -hmm. your fault. I completely agree. Was it the other person's fault then? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's not their fault at all. Okay. All right. So of the two of you, who actually did it? Now, I'm not asking for the reason. I'm asking mm -hmm. who did it? Okay. Well, I did it because of bipolar disease. No, no, no. I just said who did because it. Okay. So, did. right. So, so you did it. It was because of bipolar disorder. It's not their fault, but it's also not your fault. So I guess what? Nobody's going to take responsibility for this. And, and here's where we get to the aha moment. It may not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. And okay. people sit with that for a minute and they're like, well, but is that fair? One? No, no. Bipolar disorder isn't fair. It's mm -hmm. not fair. It is absolutely not fair to be sick. Like mm -hmm. that's just a hard stop moment. So we're right. already, we're already not fair. Uh, the second thing is, is though, but, and here's what I like, I think it's extraordinarily empowering to take responsibility for something that bipolar disorder did or that mental illness did because you, you suck its power away. See, right. right now you're still at odds with that person. You're still fighting with that person. There, mm -hmm. There's still uneasiness, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The minute you walk up to that person and say, Bob, Jane, Jimmy, Joe, I, I, I am sorry. That thing that I did was not right. And I'm sorry that you had to go through this. And I'm sorry that you did it. I, I, I would like the opportunity to explain what was going in my life, going on in my life that mm -hmm. led to this. But if you don't want to hear it, I want you to know that I deeply regret this. And I'm deeply sorry for my part in it. Mm -hmm. And then some people are like, you know, especially like family members are like, that's all I wanted to hear. I'm good. What do you want to know? Why? Nope. I don't care. You, you said you were sorry. I believe you. I just um, wanted you to take some responsibility for this shitty thing that you did. You've done it. Let's go get pizza. Other yeah. people, they're not so quick. They're like, well, why the change of heart? And they say things like, you know, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and I've been through a lot of therapy and I, I, I realized that what happened wasn't fair to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the longest time I thought, well, it wasn't fair to me either, but you know what? It, it's my responsibility. And, and I want you to know that I accept that responsibility. And I'm, I'm really sorry. Right. Uh, you know, here are the things that I'm doing to get better. Here's the things that I've been doing in my life. And it, some people may be like, you know what? I don't care. I, I accept, I accept none of this. You are, mm -hmm. a, a, you are full of shit. Get out of my life. And that is a real risk, but you've done your part. Other right. people are more slow. They're like, well, I appreciate you letting me know. And then mm -hmm. maybe slowly over the next weeks, months, or even years, they sort of watch you and they're like, oh, wow, you know, Gabe is not the same person anymore. And I've experienced the, 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 the whole gambit of that from the people mm -hmm. who forgave me immediately to the people who still haven't forgiven me and everybody in between. But mm -hmm. here's the one thing that I will say, I feel stupid, powerful, just mm -hmm. so bipolar disorder wreaked havoc mm -hmm. on my relationships. It cost me people who I cared about and loved and I have won many of them back. Okay, so yay. That means bipolar disorder is losing this battle. Um, because every yes. time somebody forgives me, that's one less person that bipolar disorder took. And, and I feel that it's just extraordinarily empowering. Um, the last thing I want to say is, what, what's my other choice? J just to let these people go? You know, we no. talk about it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. Losing these people who you love and care about and who loved mm. and cared about you for the rest of your life, I think that's the ultimate in Lost. unfair. Right. Uh, so I, 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 I stress the empowerment of taking responsibility and an apology and remembering that while it's not your fault, it's not their fault either. And, and somebody has to step up and it can be you. I, oh my God, I love this so much. You know, this further proves how we all are fighting against one disorder. I mean, like people make the person the disorder. I mean, the person's fighting the disorder themselves. So why are you, why are you saying that they're the disorder? They're, they're, they're separate, you know, you try to separate those two things. That's, um, yeah, oh God. Uh, so mm -hmm. I have around two three more questions if you don't mind before we end no, this no, no, please so um i know like it is pretty genetic but i was just curious as to you know when you 
is bipolar in any way also stemming from trauma, like childhood trauma? It's so my mind is swirling because they're not a hundred percent sure of the genetic component anymore. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, now, really? Now, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now that said, don't, don't hear Gabe said that the genetic component doesn't exist there. There's just, there's, as we get more and more research and as there's more and more, you know, now we have DNA testing and, and right. we, we, we keep better stats, et cetera. Uh, they're, they're curious about certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, now curiosity doesn't mean anything, but uh, whenever this question comes up, I always like to point out that that, that research is ongoing. And as we understand genomics better, we, we've gotten much different data that could potentially at some future point lead us to believe that maybe it's not as genetic as we thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's it's within the the, the realm of, you know, look, uh, obviously it, I have red hair and if my mate has red hair and we have a child, chances are that child is going to have red hair, mm -hmm. uh, right? Um, yeah. But if I have bipolar disorder and my mate has bipolar disorder, uh, it, we used to we used to think those numbers were astronomically high, you know, mm -hmm. just almost a guarantee. Um, but now we're starting to see, especially as people have more and more kids and we start to look at it, um, it, it it's difficult. I, I just want I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I unfortunately mm -hmm. don't have a good and keep reading keep, and be open to the idea. Um, that okay. said, parents do pass things on to their children. So right. I'm not saying that if you have bipolar disorder, you can't pass it along or won't pass it along. I'm just saying it's not necessarily at the high rates that we thought it was, or mm -hmm. it might be science is not perfect. And I'm glad that they're still investigating this and learning. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but putting that aside, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the second part of that question was just to make sure that I get it correct. Mm -hmm. What was the second part of that question? Uh, so like, in any way is childhood trauma sort of yeah. amplifying the disorder or I wouldn't say creating, but like if it's just like minuscule, like it's kind of worsening it and making it like a prominent disorder. Yeah. So here yeah, is like your the, opinion. I, I know. Like, yeah. I yeah. So yeah. here's the, here's the thing that we know, mm -hmm. right? We know that trauma exacerbates things. Mm -hmm. Hard stop, right? Mm -hmm. Not, not bipolar disorder, just in general. Uh, mm -hmm. And we know that, that trauma impacts people differently. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, let, let, let's let's use the, the tried and true example of war, right? We mm -hmm. have sent hundreds of thousands, millions of soldiers into mm -hmm. war zones uh, since the beginning of America. Right. And not every single one of them developed PTSD. Mm -hmm. Not every single one of them had trauma. Some right. people went over, saw the horrors of war, came home, didn't care. Other people went over, never saw a war zone and had severe trauma. And right. we don't understand why we don't, mm -hmm. if we could figure out who is going to be impacted by trauma and who is not going to be impacted by trauma, that would mm -hmm. be amazing. Um, but we don't understand trauma very well. <laughs> right. But what we do know is that trauma impacts people differently mm -hmm. and that trauma impacts the things that, that, it impacts the things that we have or that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, if you were already a nervous person and then a traumatic yeah. experience happens, you mm -hmm. will become more nervous. Right. Now, if you are not a nervous person and trauma happens, it's possible that you will stay not nervous mm -hmm. and you don't care, or mm -hmm. it's possible that you will become a nervous person. Mm -hmm. These are ridiculously naive examples, just to be clear. No, 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 but it makes sense. It makes sense. Explain. Uh, so if you live with bipolar disorder, right, mm -hmm. and, and you're managing bipolar disorder, and then something traumatic happens, it's going to be more difficult to manage bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So the way that you worded the question, you are correct. The, the trauma is not going to create bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're not going to be perfectly fine, have a traumatic event, and then suddenly have bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's not the way that it works. Um, mm -hmm. It's biological. So, mm -hmm. so nothing that happens to you uh, can, can cause it. Um, mm -hmm. But it can make it worse. And mm -hmm. there are certainly people out there who, because of their lifestyle, because of where they live, because of who mm -hmm. they are, even though they probably have bipolar disorder, right. uh, they, it just, the, the, the symptoms never strike in such a way that it really slows them down much. Uh, okay. I, I use the example of a rock star. Uh, okay. Let's say that, that you are a millionaire rock star uh -huh. and you have bipolar disorder. 
Mm -hmm. And the only time your depression hits is when you're not on tour. And then you mm -hmm. write really sad songs that make you famous. Uh, mm -hmm. And the only time your mania hits is when you are on tour, in mm -hmm. which case you trash a whole bunch of hotel rooms, spend a whole bunch of money and uh, perform wildly in front of crowds. You're probably never going to get diagnosed with bipolar disorder because nobody cares when a rock star uh, trashes a hotel room or performs wildly in front of her. I mean, think of all of the things that we have heard about rock stars over the years, the 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 sleeping with lots of women or, or you mm -hmm. know i say women because i'm picturing a male rock star uh but 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 having a lot of promiscuous sex that could be hypersexuality mm -hmm. or it could be rock star uh spending all your money that could be rich mm -hmm. or it, it, it could be spending thinking that you are the greatest rock star in history that could be grandiosity or you do have a number one album and a, and a sold out tour mm -hmm. so maybe they never get diagnosed because uh, their personality could be bipolar. Uh, mm -hmm. I use this example because I think of Mick Jagger a lot. Okay. <laughs> Nobody ever thinks that Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones uh -huh. has bipolar disorder, but you recognize that, you know, when he performs, it, it's very manic. It's, it's lively. It's incredible. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it just, you know, he, of course, he is a rock star of trashed many a hotel rooms. He snubbed the queen for Pete's sake. I mean, the right. queen invited him to come see her and he said, no, I, I mean, that, that, that sounds like grandiosity right there. He thinks he's bigger than the queen. Oh, yeah. uh, he, <laughs> he spent millions of dollars on the most random things over the years, but of mm -hmm. course he's, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars and will uh -huh. never run out of money. So does he have bipolar disorder? Go. Right. So, uh, but yeah. if tomorrow he had a traumatic experience, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody around him was hit by a meteor right. and he woke up broke. And then he started behaving the exact same way, mm -hmm. he, you know, with the duck face and the mania and the grandiosity and the, and then people would say, Oh, I think he has bipolar disorder. Bipolar, yeah. But, but he's been acting that way for 80 years, but no one noticed. Right. right. So is it bipolar? Is it not? Um, so to bring this back around to trauma, it, it's certainly possible that somebody uh, experiencing a traumatic uh, uh, an event could mm -hmm. definitely exacerbate the symptoms of bipolar disorder up until the point where they're now noticeable, whereas mm -hmm. before they weren't noticeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for answering that. Okay. And uh, two more questions before we end this. Yes, so yes. Um, could you... And I don't mean just like a basic overview, maybe slightly detailed. Could you give me like a bit of an overview of the difference between bipolar and schizophrenia? Like, um... yeah. So, so bipolar disorder, as we've already talked about, is is the is the highs and lows, right, and everything right, in right. between, and 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 symptoms there. Uh, in in schizophrenia, one of the big hallmarks are the hallucinations. Right. Uh, it, it's it's not that you can't have uh, hallucinations. Um, or, or, or delusions in bipolar disorder, they're mm -hmm. just not as common. Um, and, and they're, they're often referred to as like psychotic features, mm -hmm. um, in bipolar disorder. So they're, they're, they're just different. They, they mm -hmm. present differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a very terrible job of explaining this, but over in schizophrenia, uh, the hallucinations and delusions, mm -hmm. um, things like paranoia, they're, they're pretty much ever present. They really never go away. Right. So we, we've seen like the, the portrayals in Hollywood of, of people with schizophrenia and their best friend. And then we find mm -hmm. out at the end of the movie that their best friend was a hallucination the whole time. Right. Um, that is, uh, while it's a, 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 a Hollywood portrayal of, of uh, hallucinations, the, the core point, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, is that people with schizophrenia often see something uh, the, I, I don't want to say the majority of the time, because, but but they they see something often. Like I I, I know a woman who lives with schizophrenia, mm -hmm. uh, and even though she's in in really good control, she can't escape a clown. There there is just a clown. Never talks to her, right? But it just you know she'll 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 look over, and you you know like down the street, and the clown will be standing there, and and sometimes the clown will wave, but she knows what the clown looks like, and she knows that whenever she sees that clown, that it is a hallucination. Um, she's not like having a friendship with the clown or having conversations with the clown, et cetera, like often portrayed in Hollywood movies, right. but the clown is sort of ever present. 
Um, and, and a lot of people with schizophrenia have that sort of, uh, um, they, 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 they often are experiencing uh, delusions, hallucinations, both um, um, visual and auditory. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's a real big hallmark of schizophrenia. It, it's much, much, much more complicated than that. But to draw mm -hmm. a parallel between bipolar yeah. disorder and schizophrenia, it, it, it's going to be the hallucinations and delusions are much more present with schizophrenia than they are with bipolar. Bipolar. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for that. I, um, if I'm not wrong, I, I, um, I think it's called schizoaffective or something where there's like a mix of bipolar and schizophrenia. Um. Do you have any idea about like how that plays? So this is this is where the world is a complicated place. Uh -huh. uh, a, a long time ago, so so let's talk about bipolar disorder. So bipolar mm -hmm. disorder used to be called manic depressive, uh, oh, right? Because okay. yeah, they, they, that that was the name long before I was born. Uh, oh, right? okay. So had manic depressive disorder, right? That's what it was mm -hmm. called: manic depressive disorder, manic depressive disorder, manic depressive disorder, and then they changed the name. Uh, they 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 changed the name from manic depressive disorder to bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and and there there's other examples along the way of, of things that, that used to be called one thing uh, and, and now are called something else. Um, okay. And uh, so schizoaffective disorder is a combination. I, I, again, look this up. Don't rely on this information just to give you a general understanding of something to Google. Mm -hmm. um, schizoaffective disorder is essentially an overlapping of bipolar symptoms and schizophrenia symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it, picture yourself as, as, as a doctor trying to diagnose and, okay. and you're asking somebody a bunch of questions and they give you some symptoms that line up with schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. But then they give you some symptoms that line up with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And you, the doctor, are trying to make a diagnosis as accurately as possible to treat this. Mm -hmm. And you notice that the person experiences, let's say, uh, auditory hallucinations and mania. Okay, so mania is a hallmark of, of bipolar disorder. Auditory hallucinations are a hallmark of schizophrenia. So what are you diagnosing with? And so uh, the, the, everybody got together and decided that they needed sort of a, uh, may, maybe a stopping point for people who are sort of in the middle, who are experiencing both uh, uh, schizophrenia symptoms and bipolar symptoms. And they came up with schizoaffective disorder so that they mm -hmm. could you know, help more accurately diagnose, which of course leads to a more accurate treatment. Um, it is possible that there's a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. running, there's a lot of people uh, who have bipolar disorder or schizophrenia that actually have schizoaffective disorder, but when um. they were diagnosed, schizoaffective wasn't an option. So they were given the diagnosis of one or the other. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and this this has caused uh, you know some problems in their life, some treatment issues, mm -hmm. especially when they get passed off from one doctor to the next. You, you know, the the doctor who diagnosed them with schizophrenia may be aware that they're that they have bipolar symptoms, et cetera. And but now, ten years later, after they've been stable, they get a new doctor. The new doctor is like, well, you have schizophrenia according to this, but you're I don't like your meds, so they start changing things because they're unaware of this backstory. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, doctors don't read 10 years worth of uh, medical records when when you change doctors. So it becomes sort of a mess. Uh, so it, it was designed to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak to whether or not it was a good idea or whether or not it's working or whether it's not to help people. But mm -hmm. that was the genesis of the idea and where the diagnosis came from. And there's lots of people who've been diagnosed with schizoaffective and uh, um, and you know, you know, they're, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with in the advocacy world and they're, and they're doing really great things and really, really well. So, um, well, I don't have medical research to tell you if it was a good idea. I, I can tell you that people who were diagnosed with it, they're, they're getting well, they're getting better and they're leading great lives and doing great advocacy. Uh, and that's sort of what I look for. Uh, mm -hmm. is it helping people? So right. in this way, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> And uh, well, thank you for explaining that, by the way. And mm -hmm. uh, what is just like to end this? What What's one, any more advice you'd give to someone with bipolar? And especially uh, one thing I hear constantly is I don't feel understood or like no one understands me and I feel all alone. Like no matter how much you try to understand, for some reason, always felt very misunderstood. So uh, how do you deal with that? And what's some sort of advice you can give to people with bipolar so they can get, they can navigate this in in a more understood sort of way? 
one of the things that I try to think about is that a lot of people feel misunderstood. Uh, it, it's not just people with bipolar disorder who have a monopoly on not fitting in. Mm -hmm. uh, it, my mom, it, we're going to go back to my mom. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and okay. uh, and uh, th th this was a time when when women were going to work for for mm -hmm. really in 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 droves for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, but she was meeting a lot of women who were like, "Well, why don't you get a job? You can join the the workforce. You can do this." Mm -hmm. And my mom just kept saying over and over again, "I, I don't want to. I, I I don't. That's I I, I don't want to do that." Mm -hmm. um, but she also very much respected female empowerment and the fact that, that women should have choices and should be allowed to go to work. And mm -hmm. she said that she felt very misunderstood by this because she didn't feel like she was being accepted as a cheerleader, that right. either she helped the cause by getting a full-time career or she was against women working. And uh, she really didn't like to be put in that position because mm -hmm. while well, she made the decision to stay home, she mm -hmm. wanted other people to make the decision that she wanted to make. So mm -hmm. my mother tells the story because it, she just felt not accepted mm -hmm. for really the first time in her life. Uh, you know, my mother was very popular in high school. My, my mother, uh, uh, you know, she, she had a great childhood. And then she gets out in the real world and, and suddenly she sort of, and, and her mother was a stay-at-home mom and my mom okay. wanted to follow in my grandmother's footsteps and, and felt like she did. And there were pockets who understood her, but the world was changing in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mom just felt very misunderstood by other women her age. And uh, my mom felt very misunderstood when she explained, I'm okay with you going to work. You need to be okay with me staying home. Now, mm -hmm. I, I bring this up for two reasons. One, because my mom just made a decision that was really nobody's business. And, and, right. and the fact that people were weighing in on it is like, why are they doing that? Um, and, I, and the second reason that I bring it up is because ultimately, mm -hmm. we got to the point where we understood this. Pe people worked it out amongst themselves, right? right? Women are now much more supportive of people's choices and, and mm -hmm. men are still slow on the, the uptake. Um, <laughs> they're now, and that's a really good thing. And my mom also talks about that. She mm -hmm. said, as, as things moved forward and as these conversations happened, things got better for her. You know, people understood why she made the decision, especially when they started having children, et cetera. My mother mm -hmm. is a very Pollyanna, happy, patient person. Aww. So she tells this story as a good thing. She's uh -huh. like, yes, I filled out a place, but uh -huh. I, I led the life that was best for me. And eventually those people came around and understood why I made this decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fantastic for her. I, I tell this whole story because people have been dealing with this for years. It, women, minorities, a, 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 any marginalized group has been misunderstood and had to fight for power, status, understanding, frankly, since the beginning of time. Uh, so people with bipolar disorder are unfortunately no different from mm -hmm. any other marginalized group. And right. on one hand, that's depressing. That sucks. I, I wish we could get away from that. But on gotcha. the other hand, I'm just pointing out that unfortunately, we're normal, right? This is, a, it, it, it's unfortunately a very normal thing for uh -huh. society to marginalize things they don't understand. And mm -hmm. this is why we have to stick to our guns. This is right. why we have to find other people who are like us and build our tribe. This is why we have to understand that sometimes people don't understand us out of ignorance, not out of malice. Mm -hmm. My mom made her stay at home mom friends. And she also kept her friends that, that went to work and got jobs because she loved them too. She didn't isolate anybody. She just felt awkward around them. And she was like, well, I'm not going to let awkward keep me from people. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just kept doing her thing. And she learned from them and they learned from her. I, and I think about that a lot. Uh, because it, it, it does suck to be marginalized for having bipolar disorder, but it would also suck to lose all of my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, you know, sometimes I, I just have to do my thing and, and, and hope that the people around me catch on and that society changes mm -hmm. and society is, 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 is changing, albeit incredibly slowly. Uh, but I, I gotta tell you as a, as a, as a, as, a, as an almost 50 year old, uh -huh. uh, I have been doing this advocacy since my twenties. So oh, a fuck. long time been around a long time. And I have just such an incredible amount of hope because the, the, the new batch of 20 year olds. Uh, so, so the new Gabe's for lack of a better phrasing, they don't have any of the challenges that I have. Right. I, I talk to 20 year old men 
Yeah. And it's a great thing. You know, I, I talk to, so I, I'm almost 50 men aren't allowed to cry. Men have to be strong. Men have to be stoic. <laughs> uh, emotions are for wusses, right. That, that is my generation's core resting point. But I talk to the 25 year olds who are out there and they're like, we cry on Facebook. Actually, they cry on Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> uh, but, but I just, I, I, and, and now we're starting to see, uh, uh, you know, I saw a football player. I'm, I'm not a big football fan, but I saw a football player who was retiring and uh -huh. he was crying. He was crying right. openly because he was sad that this was ending for him. Like oh. and, and tears running down his face. And oh, then God. he thanked his wife and his children. And he talked about how, you know, playing football was fantastic, but getting married was better. And he's mm -hmm. looking forward now that even though he's got to give up football, he's looking forward to spending time with his wife and family time that he didn't have during the season. And he's, he's not like, he's actively crying. He's not like the uh -huh. single tear and he's choking it back. Like he's so, and this is a football player. Yeah. He's full on crying, snot and everything. And I'm like, this is a good thing because football players are man's men, right? right? They're, they're tough when they have concussions. Uh, so <laughs> I, I am, I am really excited that the younger generation is like, you know what? It, it I'm sad. I'm going to cry. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And, and I think that's a, a, a real watershed moment. And, and uh, as, as somebody who, when I was 25, mm -hmm. if we would have seen a football player crying, they would have, they probably would have turned off the press conference. They would have called him every name in the book and uh -huh. it, it, it would have been terrible. And now 25 years later, him crying has gone viral in a positive way. I think that's remarkable shift uh, in, in just a few decades. Uh, so I, I, I'm happy about that. I, I think, uh, knock on wood, we're going to be okay. I think. Uh, and, and the younger generation is really ushering that in. I'd like to think that I played some small part. Um, but hey, I, I don't big care nod, big part. played the part. Big... I'm just, I'm just happy that it's happening. Oh, no, I think, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're making a very big difference. And, uh, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, and seriously, and I, I, I want to keep promoting you. So I'm going to keep doing that. And please send me the link to your book. We will try to promote that as well. Yeah, it's GabeHoward.com. So just uh, head over there and you can grab it. And uh, and um, if you want, I I'm not going to say it live on the air, so don't share it. But here's where all my bios are and all of my fun stuff. Uh, uh, you can get uh, bios, pictures, headshots, all, all the uh -huh. stuff that you need. To, uh -huh. to make uh, awesome an awesome episode. But for all of you listeners, head over to GabeHoward.com. My podcasts are there. My book is there. Everything uh -huh. that you need is there. Uh, I hope they check it out. Yes. Oh, my God. Yay. Oh, God. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I myself am probably going to buy that. So, oh, and I just you. have to say, I love the cover book. Like, I love the title. It's just so funny. <laughs> hey, Being mental like, illness is an asshole. It is, asshole. in fact, an asshole. It's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah thank you so much and thank you for taking time out of your day to do this and i oh, hope you have welcome. a lovely day and we should probably do this again sometime yay anytime thank <laughs> you so very very much yeah take care bye thank you bye, -bye.